What's up, everybody? Luther here again. My guy, Mark, a.k.a. Ugly Dude. <laughs> what? Uh, nah, my guy, he uh, he's here. And um, very interesting guy, young guy, and a uh, cool story. Um, so, Mark, tell us the, your, your story. And uh, you was on the court for a minute giving people yeah. buckets. Yeah. I mean, you can't get me no buckets or nothing. I had eight wins on you yesterday. But I give people buckets. I, gave, I had eight wins on him yesterday. And uh, my name is Mark Vidal. I'm from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, I went to Baylor University, national champions over KU. Here you go. Um, <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I went to Baylor University, man. I won the championship at uh, right there at Baylor. Uh, I was the first in my family to graduate with a degree. And uh, I went to the NBA Summer League where I played the Trailblazers. I played along with like Michael Beasley and Kenneth Free and all that during the Summer League. And um, now I'm a football player, so it's a crazy story going into that. Man, so how you go from – how did that transpire from you getting – the experience, first of all, Summer League, I did it. I did the NBA Select. Mm -hmm. Got cut quick, I ain't going to lie. <laughs> and then uh, I know how that is. We did it at, uh, actually at Tarkania Center in Vegas. The most tough. That's where y'all was at? Yeah, it was more yeah. so like in the um, Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in Vegas. So then, uh, how was that experience? Um, that whole summer league experience was a little weird. You know, like going into that draft process, you know, I'm thinking I'm going probably uh, early second, mm -hmm. late second, somewhere around that area. Um, and I hear my name call, I was like, okay, that's cool. So what's next? But I already had in my mind that I already was going to go play for the Trailblazers. I already had talked to them before the draft. Mm. Like, if everything went wrong, I was going to go to a summer league. Mm -hmm. And that's before Kenneth Reed and Michael Beasley even committed to playing the summer league. So, I had a good situation at that time. And then once the draft was over with, I called my agent, told my agent, man, let's go ahead and sign the paperwork. And then after we signed the paperwork, it came out, Kenneth Reed's company, and Michael Beasley come. The so, names, you can't mm -hmm. compete with the names. It's yeah, so it put me in a bad situation where I couldn't play as much. Yeah, until like the last few games, because, in the summer league. Yeah, in the summer league, because yeah. at the end of the day, that's what the people wanted to see was yeah. Michael Beasley and Kenneth Reed. That's how, that's how it was when I was at uh, Texas Legends. They brought in uh, Moochie Norris, Antonio mm. Daniels, Reese Gaines, or Sharma Kent's. Yeah, you can't do nothing with them. Names. You can't do nothing with that. Man. <laughs> you can't do nothing with that. So at the end of the day, man, like I knew what my situation was going into. I seen how the league was trying to do me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They're trying to make my career more like a P.J. Tucker, mm -hmm. uh, Draymond Green. Like, it's cool. I understand that's yeah. the type of style I play. But at the same time, I want to do my own path and my own career. Right. And so then going into that football situation, that happened way back when I was in college. Um, I had a, a DM from a certain person. Mm -hmm. uh, I ain't going to say the name. That's cool. <laughs> I had a DM from a certain person. Uh, they reached out to me and said, man, he think that I can play football. He wanted me to come out and try to, you know, catch some balls, phone, come to the crib and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I don't know. I, don't, I ain't a football player. Last mm -hmm. time I played football was when I was 13. Mm -hmm. So that's that. At that point, this took off. And so after that happened, I made my decision not to. So play. you so you did, once he reached out to the person, he was like, okay. And then. Did you start training or what? You nah, man. Video or what? Man, this is how it happened, man. So after I got that, reached out. Uh, he told me to hit him up after I won the championship. And so after I won the championship, I done my whole draft process. I done worked out at his house and everything secretly. I worked out at his house and everything. And next thing you know, I'm like, okay, I got to make a decision on what I want to do. Right. And so at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm getting calls from uh, Jerry Jones. And then once I had released a video, of uh, me announcing that I'm making that transition to football. Mm -hmm. And so I get a call from all these scouts. How, how's that call with Jerry Jones? Jerry Jones, I didn't know who Jerry Jones was. <laughs> I didn't know who he was. So I got a call from Jerry Jones and uh, saying, man, come try out for the Cowboys and all that. But man, I'm like, no, this is. And he hung up the phone. I'm thinking this. <laughs> I'm thinking this is a prank or something like that. Man, I don't know who he is. And I saw, you know, I talked to my agent, and they told me who it was. Jerry Jones was the owner of the Cowboys. And I'm like, man, I heard that name so many times. You know what I'm saying? So you called him back? Yeah, I called him back. And so then it went from the Cowboys to, like, damn near every team in the league mm -hmm. reaching out. And I ended up in Seattle at first. 
Uh, I stayed there for a week and then I got cut. And then um, I ended up hitting up Mr. Veach and told him that, you know, can I get a trial? He said, short name. And came here and made the team. That's wild. Man. Yeah, never looked back at it. That's the story. See, it's just, you know, that's, that's just going to show, like, how with connections and then social media and just network, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's also come down to, like, opportunities. I mean, a lot of people don't understand that they might they might have to make a lot of sacrifices in order to, you know, get the blessing that they're trying to receive. Man, at the end of the day, I had signs throughout my whole basketball career in college. Yeah. I had Baylor football trying to hit me up. I had uh, a guy from Alabama trying to come make me play basketball and then trying to play football over there. I had all kinds of football. So he, was like, he was always like a dual guy, football yeah. and basketball. Yeah, I always had people like reaching out to me. Like when Dickie V, uh, Dick Vitell, we used to come and outside games, he used to always say, well, I think Vitell should go play tight end. You know, he liked Tom Brady. I ain't played for Tom Brady. I played for Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I'm saying, it's, it, it was just those little signs. And even when I go play 707, just climbing around with some of the Baylor guys, they're just like, why you don't ever try to play football? I'm like, man, it's not my sport. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, but everything translates over, so I'm a dual, dual athlete. Man, I, I had people when I was growing up uh, in high school telling me I should have played football. But we, and my coach back then, they made us only play one sport. You couldn't play, like, multiple sports. And then, like, I ain't gonna lie, I did one time, they told me to go out there, and uh, I, 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 I did a slant, and I came across the middle, mm -hmm. I got rocked. Yeah. And then coach was like, yeah, y'all, basketball players, y'all ain't playing, you know, if, you try, if any basketball players try, try to try out, y'all not gonna make the team. Yeah. And so that's how that was back then, in them days, and I'm like, man, you know, I could have probably did something, you know, I run a 4 3 1 back then. <laughs> you know, I know yeah, I that's a lot. <laughs> That's a lie. Hey, don't leave, bro. <laughs> That's definitely a lie. Hey, more Cheetah more leave lie. with me. <laughs> <laughs> Tyreek, Tyreek, left. Tyreek just bounced on his guys. Hey, hey I had to say so. I mean, I'm a real dog. I run a 417. 417, like, <laughs> four, no. You nah, hear that, Cheetah? 2-417. But nah, man, it's crazy because, like, the whole situation is I went to Prime Pro mm -hmm. where Deion Sanders owned that school. Like, I moved from Lake Charles. Didn't know who that was either. Yeah, didn't know who that was at, like, at all. That's who my dad talked about. Yeah. And when I got there, it was prime time. Mm -hmm. Everything was prime time. He made himself my godfather. Like, he ain't, you got a godfather? Okay, I'm your godfather. Dang. <laughs> Deion and, Sanders. And so you, you just been blessed with these opportunities. Been blessed you, with you opportunities. Move, how you move. You, if you move uh, humble. And move in a sense that you know you mean well and right. just do the right thing. Everybody gonna come to you. Nothing right. but positive energy and stuff. And that's one thing Dion always said, man. He so he always taught me, man. You gotta keep God first. And like you said, a lot of people think that you can't switch over from the sport uh -huh. and do this and do that. He's one example. He's probably the best to ever do that. Yes. You know, switch over from sports, man. From uh, baseball, I mean football to baseball, and win a World Series and do different things like that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because at the end of the day. He always said, man, go out first. People going to hate on you. Mm -hmm. They're going to say what they want to say about you. But what's your mind telling you? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You got to be able to crack. Don't crack under pressure. You know, just do what you want to do and do what you love. Mm -hmm. And whatever your mind going to do, God going to take care of it. So that's why I came up with, man. Like, there's so many signs. I'm like, man, it's, I, I'm, I just got to go play football. That's what it was coming up just, to. Just take the risk to see what happens. Yeah, I said, I got to just take this risk because at the end of the day, if this NBA stuff don't work, I can go overseas. I had I had a career in different places. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it came down to. Whatever whatever opportunity knocks. Yeah. You never want to have those things look back and say, I should have, could have, would have. Or what if this, or what if I would have did this. Because yeah. then it, that's, that's, that, that's going to linger you and, and haunt you for the rest of your life. That's you true. You know what I'm saying? What, uh, so first year playing, what did you, I know this is like a learning process, learning phase. Like how, yeah. how, was, how was that and what are you looking forward to uh, working on? Yeah, this was more so like a red shirt year. I red shirted my first year in college. So I looked at it as that a red shirt yeah. year, just learning, trying to see the speed of the game, what to do, what not to do. I'm learning behind Travis Kelsey. Blake one of the Bell, best, one of the greats. Man, like, I'm learning behind a great tight end coach. You know what I'm saying? And then I got a quarterback, I got receivers that's always teaching me the game too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I looked at it as a red shirt year. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Look at it as a red shirt year. I'm growing, I'm growing. All right. And um, you're getting paid good yep. to grow. Dang. So at the end of the day, that, yeah, you can't complain about that. Shit. And so now I'm at, all right, I know what I need to do now. Heck yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that though. As long as you like, you're moving good, 
And now, now the off season hit. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, we gonna start hitting hit the gym a little bit. Right. You know, what are some of your goals that you know you want? Even like when we start training, like you want to work on like movement wise. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? Like what you know. I learned that by just watching. You got to be more. Um, you got size. You got you got yeah. mobile. You got to be mobile. You got to move. But the only thing you got to learn is coming from a basketball standpoint, you used to taking big steps. Mm -hmm. Coming to a football standpoint, you got to learn how to make them quick and fast, chopping small, them short. chopping them in short. And so that's one thing I'm going to work on. A lot of my footwork, yeah, it's different, bro. Like, <laughs> you understand, man, when you come off um, routes and trying to plan and go, your steps are big, you know what I'm saying? Because you're so used to not putting your feet together. Mm -hmm. Now it's got to come to the chopping them up, you know, a lot of flexibility and movement, you know what I'm saying? And uh, my hands are always good, right? you know, because of basketball reaction and, and catching. You, and you move graceful yeah, so, with your feet. And that's a good thing. So me playing defense, like, you know, playing defense is part of that, mm -hmm. playing, being part of that footwork. I can move lateral, I can move however you want to move. So that's a lot of, a lot of you know, a lot of stuff. Like, yeah. And so, yeah, so we're going to hit it hard with that type of stuff. Yeah, right? and then just basically saying athletic. One thing I learned Stand is, mobile. Yes, you gotta you gotta be able to be a little different from other tight ends in some way. The thing about like when you were in college and I, I was you know, we all play college, so like when you were in college and high school they just throw all this weight at you. Mm. So you so you yeah. get big, but you just big. You yeah, know what I'm saying? You like don't do that. Like how does that translate to the field or how does that translate to the court? Uh, you gotta be able to move that weight and move your you know, move yeah. The it's, weight and move your body at the same time it's, and, and be efficient. It's different, man. Like, I was always taught not to lift too much weight. Mm -hmm. and now that you're in football, I mean, they put all the weight on you. And, it's, get me and wrong. that's not necessarily that's my thing. That's not necessarily my thing. You gotta take away from a lot of explosiveness that put, you know, pain on your back, your knees. My thing is this. I always was taught to do resistance. I was always taught to, okay, it's okay to lift heavy weight some, you know. Not every two, time. Not all the time. But by you doing that, that makes you more explosive. You know, what makes your muscles better is by you using your body weight more, mm -hmm. more calisthenics things. So that's what I'm more used to than anything. Gotcha. Shit. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, getting you back explosive. Try to get your bounce back so you can, you know, dunk the ball again. Nah, that's you know, not I know true. you lost your hops since you ain't been on the court too long. Yeah, that's true. He's lying. <laughs> man, can't get the, I can barely get the bottom rim. He's man. lying. We're going to go ahead and get this pick up, these pickup games going. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. going yeah. to be our cardio, you know, weights and, you know, get our pickup. I win every time, just to let y'all know. Man, man, he might get one win. You eight. Know. Yesterday. <laughs> man, got eight. Eight wins. So, y'all hear that? All, all my my fellow hoopers are, are old school hoopers who still got some in the tank. Y'all heard that. Y'all y'all more invited to come out. Y'all shoot me a DM or text. Eight Pull wins. up. Ain't no eight wins, bro. They're not, they're not, they're not going to come because they're going to be scared. Oh, shit. Yeah. You hear this dude, man? He get <laughs> He's gonna be scared. Man. I'm gonna get all the wins that y'all. So I'm gonna come back with a second uh follow up with this fool and it's gonna be me ten wins, this guy zero wins. That's what we're gonna be doing. You know that's not true. You we just gonna dream about it. <laughs> there you go. Well man, I appreciate your time, appreciate man. Appreciate it, brother. And much love and success. Yep. Second year coming up, man. Y'all be on the lookout for this dude. He's up and coming. And uh he's gonna do some big things out there. He moves graceful, he moves he's a very humble dude. And uh he gonna shock the world. Be on the lookout for this fool. Peace out.